Hey guys, Bruce here with the DIY Homestead Projects channel. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be making a stand for my Bauer from Harbor Freight portable bandsaw. I've had this for about a year now and I've really been wanting a, a, uh, a stand for it. I know that there's several stands you can buy. Swag makes a real nice one. But I'm just going to make a stand with uh, scrap junk pieces of metal that I have laying around. I'm going to be using a piece of, or several pieces of this uh, one and a half inch wide angle iron. This is three sixteenths thick and then I've got some half inch rebar. These are just a couple sample pieces of it that I have here. I've got some longer pieces and then I'm going to be using this. I suppose these are designed to like hang rakes and stuff. It's got a threaded end. You can screw it into a stud in the wall or something and hang a rake on it or a shovel. I picked these up at the hardware store several years back and I've actually used it in the top of a like a fence post as a temporary stand but it fits underneath the handle of the saw real nice. Let's see if I can show you how that this works like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use rebar and make a couple of bars that come down connected to this and then use this 3 16 inch angle iron for a base. I know it's not going to be the prettiest in the world but I really uh, enjoy trying to make something useful out of just scrap more or less junk that I have laying around. I've been using this angle iron for practicing my TIG since uh, some of you if you've been watching my channel know that I just got a new TIG welding machine and I've been trying to learn how to TIG. This would be a perfect project for me to practice with I think. I'll get some pretty good experience out of it. I don't know about TIG welding rebar. Rebar is pretty dirty metal so I may have to do some extensive cleaning where I intend to weld it in order to get a decent weld. But that's part of the fun and the fabrication of this, trying to make something out of nothing. It's virtually going to cost me zero. I've already got this stuff laying around. So let me get out there and get some pieces cut and do some measurements and probably do the measurements first and then cut the pieces and see what I can formulate. I don't have any plans. I'm just dreaming this up in my head as I go. I hope you guys enjoy it and uh, let's get started on it. Okay, I've got three pieces. I cleaned them all up with a wire brush and then I cut them to 15 inches in length and then I cut three pieces at an inch and a half. So this is basically how this is going to fit together at least this part. I don't know how many of the little inch and a half pieces I need but I cut three. And then my little mount is going to go in here now it's not going to be straight up and down. It's going to have a tilt to it. But I want to put one piece right there. So I'm going to weld these as close together as I can and put this little chunk on there. Maybe one down here in the middle. And then we'll see what happens at the bottom. But that's how I'm going to start. And uh, so I'm going to work on getting, not this piece yet, but getting these little this little chunk welded on here see how that goes
Well, there's the first piece welded on. And I'll tell you what, for a new guy, that is not the easiest thing in the world to do. But I am definitely happy about the way it came out. Sorry about the shaking around. I'm trying to get that in, in the frame so it'll focus on it for you. So I'm going to try to put another one about six inches farther down than that one right there. So we'll do that next. All right, there's my piece so far. Now my next tricky part is going to be connecting this because uh, the angle at which you put it on there is going to make a difference. So here's what I'm going to try to do. This has a rubber coating on it, which is nice, and I'd like to be able to keep that. But once I start welding on this, I I don't know it may just evaporate I'll try to keep it as cool as I can but the way I want this to be is like this and then this little button fits right between these two pieces of rebar to kind of help support it and I may have to put a little piece of rebar on each side, but we'll see. But what I want to do is I want to get this mounted at such an angle so that this upright piece is parallel to the blade. So that's why I'm trying to figure out how to set this angle and how to get that set up correctly. Anyway, that's the tricky part. That's what I'm working on right now. So I'm going to fiddle around with that and see if I can't get a tack on it. Get it set at the proper angle and then go from there. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly parallel, but the closer it is, the better off it'll be, I think. This is how that went. That again was not easy. This is definitely a challenge, especially for a new welder, but it's not coming out of there anytime soon. And I didn't do a very good job of keeping that cool. It melted that rubber away. I trimmed it so it looks halfway decent, but I want to leave as much on there as possible so these don't slip off of there when I'm pulling the saw off of the stand. So now I need to cut that bolt off of there and smooth it out with the grinder a little bit. Then I'll be ready to start working on the uh, on the rest of it. All right, here's where it could horribly go wrong or it could be a, a good idea. We'll find out soon. So to get the angle I want on this mount, I'm going to take my saw and I'm going to cut halfway through it. Then I'm going to bend the rebar where I want it. Then I'm going to weld the cut back up. Probably not the best idea, but it sounds like a lot of fun, so that's what we're going to do. Well, that wasn't good. Idea number two. I guess I'll have to tack that back on and weld it all the way. This one's probably going to break too. All right. Let's figure something else out. All right. I recovered from that. And I learned a few things. Which is always good. One, if you have a welder, nothing's ever really broken. <laughs> so I cut them both off and then just welded them back on at the angle that I wanted. This will fit up there like that and then this will miss 
at the back end like that. And then that's going to give me pretty close to the vertical angle that I need uh, to be parallel with the blade. It looks pretty close. Anyway, the angles came out great. I just guessed on it, welded it back together, see how it would look, and worked out just fine. All right, we'll pick up from here, and uh, next thing will be, I'll be working on making that base. Got the base made. All I did was took about a three foot piece of that angle iron, cut two 45s in it on one edge, bend it over and welded it. And I need a lot of practice on welding corners, I, I found out. The left side came out pretty decent. The right side was terrible. I had to do it twice. And then I got the uh, stand welded on there, as you can see, and I had to do <laughs> I had to do some left-handed and right-handed. I had to swap hands to get in there. So one side looks pretty decent and the other side has got some pretty good undercut because I was slow and stuck in there too long with too high of temperature. But anyway, it'll hold and it'll serve its purpose. I'm going to weld a piece of rebar across here for the bottom of the saw to sit on and then a couple of cross pieces on it to keep the bottom of the saw from moving side to side. So that'll be what I'm working on next. So this is what we got so far. Interesting thing about a project like this is I need a tool like this to build a tool like this. <laughs> Once you get it to where you can hang the saw on there, then you can start to kind of fine tune things. I've got a piece of eighth inch by one inch steel back here just setting in there. And that's going to support this flat back piece of the, uh, of the saw kind of keep it from twisting back and forth and it needs to be welded on there so I need to cut it to length strip the paint off of it round off the edges make it nice and then get it welded on and then down here below on the base I'm gonna put a couple of pieces of rebar coming from the sides with a plate on the edge just the width of the bottom of the saw then once it's in there there's nowhere side to side that the bottom can go so I want to cut out those parts and kind of get them all shaped and cut to the size that I need and then start working on getting those welded in. Once I get those welded in and clean it up, throw a coat of spray paint on it to keep it from rusting. Of course things around here don't rust, it takes a long time. Get those welded on here and then uh, paint it up and I'll be ready to rock and roll. So far it's pretty darn stout and uh, it's pretty good. It's a little bit bouncy but I think when I get the bottom thing figured out that may stiffen it up either way it's not going anywhere if it is a little bouncy but hey what do you expect for rebar right As the saw puts pressure on this piece and holds it in place based on the angle that it needs to be at get it positioned where I want it to be so it looks halfway straight anyway. And now we'll weld that in place. I'm just going to put a tack on each side and then I'm going to remove the saw and weld it.
Well, here's the final stand, the final product. I put a piece of rubber around that top piece so it kind of wedges the handle. I'll show you that here in just a minute. Wedges the handle right in the top and just makes it rock solid. So there's no play in it, no wiggle. Got the support right down here that supports the back of the saw. And then a lot of the weight goes right on that platform right there. Keeps it from moving side to side and uh, it, the saw rests on that for support for the bottom. So I'll show you how easy it is to put the saw on the stand and then I'll show you a little bit about how I run it. Plug it in and it's ready to go. This will give you a close up look at the Velcro strap I used to uh, secure the trigger so when I turn it on and off via the power strip it just comes on and goes off. Now you can get variable foot pedals for these but uh, this works just fine for what I'm doing. That's what the bracket around the bottom looks like from that side and how it holds it. Power cord comes right through the rebar on the back side. And then that side, I'll show you underneath how that bracket supports the bottom of the saw. So there's no bounce to it. No sway, rattles on the table a little bit, but and then here's where I put the rubber so there's no gap between the handle and the front supports and it just holds it nice and solid. There's the support across the back. It's nice and solid. The only thing wobbling is my little welding table. Rock solid. No play in any direction. I just take the cord. I've got it plugged into a power strip. And with the Velcro strap on the trigger, this is my on off switch. So I just turn it on, cut what I need to cut, turn it back off, and we're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Let me know in the comments if you like this longer version. This is a real detailed, kind of a longer clip, and I'm not sure how you guys are going to enjoy that if you want it cut down or you prefer the longer ones. Just let me know what you like in the, in the comment section. And if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.